How are you doing? Doing Jay? great. Doing good. Do you go by Dan or Daniel? I'm go. I go by um any any anyway like Dan uh, Daniel or Dan this or Dan doesn't matter. Okay, cool. Nice. Sounds good. Well, yeah. Good. Good to good to be here. Thank you for having me. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Um, can you tell me a little? Uh, um, can you tell me a little about yourself? Like how you got yeah. started on music and all. Yeah. Um, I have been uh, playing playing music since uh i was in sixth grade um like a, I just loved the weezer blue album so much that when it when it came out i was in sixth grade at that time uh i was just like i gotta learn how to do that on guitar how to play that kind of music so uh that that started me off and then um yeah over the years i got into uh punk rock music singer songwriter music um i didn't do the college thing i just got right in the van and started touring and um i have been doing that ever since so i'm just been cruising cruising around the country and sometimes the world <laughs> and uh playing shows and stuff yeah well that's cool so have you been like writing your own music at that time yeah Yep. I, when I first started playing, I, I linked up with a, a buddy of mine, um, all these years back and he was writing his song, his own songs already when we were, when we were young. And I was just so jealous of the fact that he could write his own music, that it, he wasn't just playing other people's tunes. So I immediately just started trying to write music. And so I've been, I've been writing music the entire time that I've been playing guitar, which is uh, probably about 25, 25 years or something like that. 26, 27 years. A long time. Yeah. Do you have a favorite song you like you, um, you wrote? Hmm. A favorite song that I wrote. Uh, that's a good question. Um, I, whenever I get to play the song, what were you born for? It's, it's a song that I released in 2018, I think, uh, whenever I get to play that one, I always really feel it, you know? So I, I like, I love the lyrics still. I love the vibe of it. Um, I'm glad I wrote it instead of somebody else. Let me say that. So, <laughs> so maybe that's one of my favorites. What were you born for? Do you write your music or do you have somebody else to write it for you? Um, for this project, for Haunted Continents, which is what I call the music that's only, that's really pretty much just me. Um, I am, for the most part, writing um, all of it, 100% of it, mo for most of the time. But I have done a couple collaborations with... Um, with other friends and they've, they've contributed, uh, maybe a verse or like a cool guitar line or, or a bass part or something like that. So there are songs that I have done some collaborations with other people, but, um, for the most part, Haunted Continents is just kind of like what I can get into my schedule when I'm not touring or doing stuff with, uh, other musical projects that I play in. It's kind of just like my way to just do my own thing in those small little pockets of time that I have. Can I, um, can I hold you? Can I uh, turn off this light? Cause it's fl flickering. Yeah, go for it, buddy. I'm in no rush. No worries. Do you think? That's much better. There you go.
So how did you get involved in, um, in like podcasting world? So I'm curious to know your story too. I, I don't really I, know much about you. I started, well, I had did the podcast like around high school. Um, I had a podcast called, um, Tune the World's Out radio show. And I did a lot of local bands in Kansas City. And then um, then I stopped. And then... Because um, I was not in school at the time. Or I was going... I was not really... I graduated high school. But then after that, I took a time off before I went to college. And then mm-hmm. I kind of wanted to do um, radio in college. And then I just got the opportunity to have my show on college radio for three years. And then I got, nice. they gave me, gave me opportunity to come back over COVID. So I did that. And then just keep on going, interviewing people. That's what I love. Love it. And I do music on the side, so I write my own stuff. Nice, you got your own project. Yeah. Cool. Nice. Yeah, I can tell that you love it. It, it checking out your profiles and stuff. It see how how deeply you feel it. And I even see like the little the sign above your door that says rock. What does that say? Rock and Roll Boulevard or rock? And, what does that say? Rock with oh um yeah Rock and Roll Boulevard yeah. Love it, love it. <laughs> my my mom my mom found it at a, at a uh, like a house that they were selling. They were like just throwing mm-hmm. all their trash in like a in the house, trying to find different things. I guess my mom found it and said, "Oh, I think you'll like this." Nice. Yep. Study you. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> So how when did you start doing TikToking? Uh, in I think April. I started in April. So what of this year? <laughs> it's been one, two, three, about three and a half months. I'm I'm brand new to it. I'm brand new. Yeah, to it. it's 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 interesting. I started over COVID, and then I kind of. Dropped off of it for a little bit because it was getting hectic over there, and then mm-hmm. I came back came back to it. Yeah, yeah, it's an interesting platform. I, you know, I am such a stubborn old dinosaur. Like, I, I feel like I'm. There's still a part of me that's stuck in the '90s where like CDs were still a thing. So like, I was hesitant. I was reluctant to get into streaming. I was reluctant to get into MySpace. I was reluctant to get into Facebook. I was just so reluctant with all this crap. And uh, I just waited and waited and waited on the TikTok thing. But then I just checked it out once. And then I noticed there was like some some cool artistic stuff happening. And uh, it's like, you know what? Screw it. I'm just going to hop in. Why not? Let's just have some fun. So I just yeah. decided to just have some fun with it. So that's why yeah. I'm at, three and a half months later. I mean, I did all that. I did the MySpace for a while. And then, then when that ended, everybody went to Facebook and then, and then some people went to Twitter. I didn't really like Twitter that much, but cause you can't do it. I could never, nothing. but um, now they're bringing it onto Instagram. It's interesting. Yeah. Yep, the threads thing. Dude, it's so funny. It's like the threads thing came out and then everybody's just like, you see all these articles of like how to blow up on threads. And I'm just like, I'm just so exhausted. I just don't give a shit. Like, who cares? I don't want to blow up on threads. Like, just leave me alone. There I am, just like a cranky old dinosaur again. But that's just me. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I do a lot of spoken word. Um, kind of stuff and then I kind of did I did a couple of, of like an EP in college with a friend and then 
we've been going back and forth when because he now he lives in reno so we kind of email email our stuff back and forth and he does it he does the mastering for me and all that fun cool. stuff that comes with it yeah hey he's in reno where where are you are you still in kansas city yeah yeah okay cool nice that's awesome yeah, it's 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 totally nice to have somebody that will do it for you for free. But yeah, that's that's always nice to have a collaborator that's on board that has those that has those skills for sure. Because it can get expensive, right? I mean, it's like yeah. you got new tracks. Each new track is a certain amount of money. It depends on what you're doing. I mean, like I just started getting into mixing the the song that I just released it's called Fade Tonight. It it's the first song I've ever mixed by myself. I've been recording my own music for, uh, uh, man, 20, 20, 15, 20 years, but I never got into the mixing part of it. I always let somebody else do that because I was a little too scared because it's the final, you know, one of the final steps before you release it to the world. But yeah, kind of yeah. just like in the same vein, I was just like, you know, if I release a song every month, each song costs almost $400 for mixing and mastering. And that's if I do it with buddies, that will do it cheap. It's almost four thousand dollars a year that it's like ah you know what i should just learn how to do this and put that money towards like something good here or or something else yeah something to help push me forward but uh yeah so i i hear you it is nice to have people that could do you those sort of favors that's great i mean i would love to learn how to do it um on this small little laptop of mine but i just mm -hmm. It would be nice to record my own stuff. I don't have to send it out all the time or just wait and wait right. till a freaking single comes out. Yep. Yep. You can move, move at your own pace. I mean, I mostly record it and then send it out, but it's just the audio. It's not like nothing fancy mm -hmm. or anything. Right. Just a computer and a microphone and headphones. Right. Yeah, it's nice to have a light setup like that. When um, You should send me some stuff, man. I would love to hear it. You should email me some links to some stuff when we're off. All right. All right. I will. Mostly, they're, mostly it's on like, um, there's some singles on Spotify, but mostly... Um, then the other, like mostly all of them are on um, Apple. Because I don't know how, the first time when I did it, they they kept them all on there. And then they deleted, the, not deleted them, but just, just took them off my um, account. I'm thinking, where are the, my, all my single covers on Instagram? Um, mm. Spotify, and I'm saying, okay, this is really weird. Then I was thinking of um, changing it to a different platform at the time, and then I said, so for, just forget it. Just keep it on there and see how it goes. Right. Right. But Yeah, man. That's frustrating. The problems with those things, they're, they're very, you know, it's so common. I've had problems with the streaming platforms too. Kind of kind of sucks, but I mean, just do what you did. You just deal with it and move forward. You know? Yeah. I mean, I, I was going to go to all the CD baby, but then I said, forget it. I'm not going to waste more money on another platform. Yeah. And have two different names. Yeah. Well, I did yeah, yeah. have a, I did have a problem with a guy trying to try to make me um, change my name because he had the same name as me on Spotify. On mm. Spotify. He said, no, I'm not changing my name. I was born with this name. <laughs> oh, it was just Daniel Owen? Yeah, yeah. And he wanted you to change it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah sure, dude, I'll do that for you. <laughs> so it kind of, it kind of like started that, and I said, okay, well... You're from a different country, but I'm not changing it. Yeah. 
Good. I'm glad you didn't. <laughs> but, but yeah. Um, so do you do shows? I do. Yep. I do shows um, as much as I can. With this project, I, I don't do as many, uh, although I will be doing a lot more this year. But uh, yeah, I do shows in kind of all, all over the country. Do you have a favorite venue you'd like to play at? Yeah. I, my favorite venue has got to be uh, probably Johnny Brenda's in Philadelphia. I think that's my favorite venue. It's a really, really cool, really cool place, like a 200 capacity room with like a balcony and the stage has got, it's like a high stage and uh, it just, it feels so shallow. So it feels like everybody's kind of like on top of you. It's just a really neat, neat feeling in the place. The staff is all really awesome. So Johnny Brenda's in Philly. That's, that's my number one. Do they have food there too? Yeah, they got awesome food. <laughs> yep, they've got great beer. They've got great food. I mean, it's like one of those places that just like they they kill it in every department. It's like the vibe is great. The the music that they play like over the speakers like is awesome. It's always awesome. There's usually somebody spinning some kind of like vinyl, you know, old. It's just such a good vibe. Really, really cool spot. Well, I know there's um, a lot of cool places in New York City um, that I would love to go mm -hmm. to, to check out. Um, but here in Kansas City, we have tons of really um, fun little um, places to play at. Um, I, w I don't think I would want to go on stage and play, but I'm kind of that kind of, I don't know, I just like to play make music and let people listen to it but online that's the only thing i don't know if i can get on stage just kind of nervous being yeah i yeah i can imagine have you ever done it before um well i've used to like when i was in like church i used to were in plays but i did like maybe like mm -hmm. kind of stuff like that but not with my own music Right. It's, it, it's, it's, it's got some similarities, but it's also a completely different beast when it's your own material too. So it, yeah, but that's cool. I mean, you've been on the stage, you know what it feels like. It's pretty exhilarating, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I did have a good yeah, voice. Well, I, I still have the voice, but I mean, they don't have the voice like I used to have, like the very powerful one <laughs> that, that comes when you get, younger and then it goes away and you look like a young man to me i bet you that if you warmed up and you like practice for a couple of weeks to get back into the swing i bet you you could get it back yeah i hope so too that would be great <laughs> yeah you go for it um Who like who would you want to who would you want to go on tour with if you have the chance to? That's easy. I like. I adore Death Cab for Cutie. I think that they're just so awesome. I've loved that band since two thousand. I saw them for the first time when I was just a a kid. I went to this venue in a shitty part of town, and. Uh, it was like a snowstorm. There's like 10 people in the audience and I just fell in love with them then. And ever since then, I've just been all about it. So like I get so much influence from them lyrically, musically. I just, I'm, a, I'm kind of a fanboy about it, but so those guys, that would be, that'd be my one. Um, anyway, like any, any bands that are, like are dead, would you want to go, go play with them? Yeah. Yep. Uh, I mean, okay. So dead. Hmm. I hugely influenced by buddy Holly. I would love, I would love to see that guy play crazy. That guy was like 20 in his early twenties. I don't know exactly how old he was when he died. 
Early 20s, though. Like, I don't think he was older than 23. Nuts. But, like, the impact that guy's had on music, all before the age... Of, everything he made was before the age of 23. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. Um, Stevie Nicks isn't dead, but I would love to play... I would love to play music with her. I think her voice is unbelievable. I love Stevie Nicks. And Joni Mitchell. She's not dead either, but I would love to play with Joni Mitchell. How about the I mean, do you do you have any like newer songs on your like on your phone that you listen to? Or on your um your devices that you like if you're in the car, what do you listen to? Pop? Uh if I'm in, yeah, if I'm in the car, I will listen to uh some some newer artists, some Spotify artists, um, or artists that I found on Spotify. Um, I really like Field Medic a lot. Um, I like uh, Samia. Samia, I don't know how she pronounces her name. I know they say it in the record. I, f- I forget. I feel like a dingus. I forget. But uh, yeah, Field Medic, Samia. Uh, who else have I been listening to? I've been listening to that new acoustic Death Cab record that just came out. Uh, yeah, those those are my those are my big ones right now. Those are my top three. Well, I'll also listen. I also listen to a lot of metal and hardcore and stuff like that. And uh, one of my favorite bands is Converge, a uh, metal hardcore band from Boston area, Salem, Massachusetts, Boston area. And I listen to them all the time too. So that's 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 about it. The nutshell the last week of listening oh because it's really you is it like very loud, loud and crazy when you listen to it because all the sounds <laughs> <laughs> yep it's i i crank it because i i want to feel it <laughs> well don't you don't don't you have a family so hopefully that they don't they don't wake up when they're when they're hearing all this music playing I do. I've got my, I'm married and, uh, my wife and I have a kiddo and we're actually, we're expecting another one in October and you're absolutely right. I can't blast music here at home past certain hours. Although we do listen to a lot of music, but, uh, yeah, if I'm listening to music loud, it's usually in the car. That's where I find my music is on Spotify and just listening to online radio. Because that's where everything is at. Yeah. Yep. It's mm-hmm. mostly just like Googling, trying to find new music to play for my podcasts or trying to find new people to interview. It's always searching on YouTube or or just watching the videos to see who's good. <laughs> nice. Yeah, it's a great way to discover people. Those the, like the... Um, the Spotify radio for sure. I found out a lot of cool bands that way. I remember hearing Big Thief for the first time that way. I was like, who the hell is this? They were on, um, I was listening to a Wilco album and the, the Wilco album finished. And then, you know, the Spotify algorithm kicked in and just played some stuff that it thought I would like. Cause I was listening to Wilco and uh, big thief came on. And I was like, what is this? This is so good. I've been hooked on them ever since too, but so I, I'm grateful for that algorithm. I've been I've been listening. I will the other day I was bringing I was watch like listening to my music on my iPad or my iPod at the time. I just brought it out. I was like, okay, I was just trying to find new stuff, and all these songs came back to me, and I said, oh, there's Wakey Wakey. So I was listening to that, and that was really. Nice. That was something good because I've been listening to that when I was nice. younger, but then I noticed he was on the. Yeah, it's nice to be reminded of some of that stuff. Yeah. So, where do you see yourself in ten? In like ten at ten in ten years or something? Still doing music? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've been at it for uh, about 20 years, 
20, uh, 21 years. And uh, I foresee the next 21 years just being the same thing and uh, continuing to play, continuing to write music, continuing to play shows, continuing to uh, get stoked on other bands and collaborate and just do as much as I can to just have music and music creators be as much part of my life as possible for sure i'm a lifer i'm a lifer for sure um do you have any like lyric videos out or any um music videos out that you just create yeah yep i i do have some uh i do have some lyric videos and some music videos um I could send I could send you some links uh, after, or send you a link to my YouTube channel. I've got some of them on there. I got to do some more. I got to do more. I like a couple of years ago. I, I sort of felt like, well, what's the point of doing long form content? Nobody gives a shit about that anymore. It's all about the micro content. You know, yeah. Putting a lot of time into music videos and lyric videos, and they just wouldn't. It, I just didn't, it didn't feel justified, the reaction, and uh, whereas stuff that didn't take as long was getting so much more exposure. It's like, why am I doing this? I, I just, I kind of stopped for a little bit, but then a part of me misses the creative outlet of those longer form content uh, videos. So I do want to get back into it, because I feel like you can make cool statements with long form videos, and uh I haven't been doing that in a minute, so that question kind of reminds me, like, I feel like I should be. I should get back into that. I, d I do have some lyric videos I put out when I was in college, and then, um, and they, they, they are, they are on YouTube and stuff. Nice. Nice. Did they take you a long time to make? Well, I had them made. <laughs> I had just people making them for me. So I couldn't even figure out how to do it. That's... Yeah, fair enough. Uh, but that costs money, right? Yeah. I mean, it's just like... Yeah. <laughs> all this all this shit to spend money on with music careers is kind of crazy. Yeah. Me. It's just like, you get to be a jack of all trades. Well, master of none, but jack of all trades. Well, I paid them in cookies, so there you go. <laughs> Um, that's a good vibe. That's how I'm getting paid for this for this interview, right? Is uh, cookies? <laughs> well, you, if you want me to send you some, I do. I do have a cookie business. <laughs> yeah, I'm a yeah. I'm a track and trade. Do you really? Yeah, I, I'm a track and trades here. I have everything. I do everything. I have two podcasts. I have the Uncles in Fatherhood. I have um, this one. Then I have the cookie business that I do, and I just. I do everything. Dude, that's awesome. I love that. What's your cookie business called? Owen's Oven. Owen's Oven. Yes. I love it. And it, that's and it does man. have that's an great. Instagram, and it also has a website. Um, I have to make a... Cool. I have to make four dozen cookies this weekend. Um, and... Uh, it's for a college, the University of Kansas. I'm doing it for a class. They ordered it for me, and I'm just, they're picking it up, and people are eating them. <laughs> that is so cool. What kind of cookies is your favorite to make? Well, they change different days, but I do chocolate chip. Um, they ordered... Can't they that. or Can't they M and M a uh, M and M cookie, um, mm. uh, like a I like um, a butter cookie with sprinkles. Mm. It's, it's mm -hmm. they're very tasty and they melt in your mouth. Um, <laughs> I mean, I can go on it. I just don't yeah, want to. Yeah, that sounds great. But I mean, there's there's tons of them. <laughs> That's awesome. It keeps me motivated because I don't really have a job, really. So 
mostly doing all these projects keep me going. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, you're definitely a busy guy. I try to be. I'm also part of a chapter in Kansas City called the Best Buddies um, chapter, and and it just it's that is exciting because I got um, nominated for the their award kind of thing they're doing um, in in October. So race. Nice, congrats. Oh, thanks, thanks. So I'm just keeping on doing what I'm doing. Yep, that's good. <laughs> um, do you have any like new songs coming out that you're working on right now? Yeah, uh, I do. I've got um, I've got a new one that should be out in mid uh, mid September, mid late September. It's called Thaw. T H A W. Thaw. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yep. I'm, I'm excited to just have another one come out and. Uh, it's going to be a little bit more upbeat, energetic than this last one. This last one was kind of like the whole vibe of the song is like the message is it's like, it's cool to be, it. it's cool to, to stay in. It's cool to not worry about the, what the world is up to. It's cool to like stay home and just be reclusive and introverted. And you don't need to go out and do that maniac dance that the rest of the world seems to be doing all the time. So it's like, all month, I'm just like making content that's just like s super. In it's like uh, the subject matter is like it's okay to be an introvert, introvert, introvert. And I got some people be like, "You all right, dude? What's going on with you this month?" Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. yeah, I'm good. I'm just you know I'm just promoting this song that is like deep in my feels. And uh, you know, next week I'm gonna be, or next month I'm gonna be promoting a, a more upbeat song. People. We'll, uh, we'll get the other side of my personality a little bit more energetic. and uh, It's tough being a, a artist releasing music. You kind of end up being a little manic. It's just like you bounce back and forth between poles. Yeah. Does your son, does your son like the music too? He does. Yeah. He does. He loves music. He's funny. He wants to hear. He wants to hear music constantly. He'll always go, "Sing me a song." He's two years old. He wants you to sing him "Twinkle Twinkle Little Star," but he he just wants that constantly. He's always like, "Sing me a song. Sing me a song." Like, okay, man. Let's do this. I'll always sing you a song, buddy. Do you think he'll be a musician as well? Uh. It's impossible to know, but he definitely has some like cool musical inclinations. I can hear he already sings in pitch, you know. He's got he's got an ear for for pitch, and uh, he is drawn to the piano. We've got this beater old piano in our living room, and he's drawn to it. He likes to pound on it, and uh, he'll pound on it for a minute, and then he'll stop and he'll look, and he'll be like, "Clap for me!" So he knows what a performance is. He's got that stage thing that. <laughs> you got that addiction to the stage like his, like his dad that's a that that would be good do you, i think he'll be a good um, musician playing around maybe you should do a song with him record yep. a song with him yeah and do uh do a uh split release on spotify he'll get his own artist profile <laughs> i guess you could do um the song, the song you were talking about, this uh, "Twinkle Twinkle Little Star," or you can do a remake of that or something. Yeah, we're we're, we're gonna drop a remix, uh, a remake of "Twinkle Twinkle Little Star" in October. It's gonna be it's gonna be hot. I think that would be great. <laughs> <laughs> um. 
Let me see. Let me hang out with them. I don't know. What what's up my mind right now? Um So what's your like what's the process of writing a song? Uh it generally looks like sitting with a guitar or at the piano and kind of like uh sort of like exploring different chord combinations just kind of like starting with starting with one chord or a feel and then just kind of using my ear or my gut to just think like where does this particular song want to go next just one chord at a time and uh as i start to do that i'll also kind of like hum a melody that has some kind of rhythmical structure rhythmic structure to it and uh, if i'm really lucky i might get like a phrase out of it as well but usually it's just kind of like mumbles like you know at, with the chords that are kind of st i'm stumbling around with but um most times i i'll get at least one phrase or one group of words I, I'll, like i'll get my song title usually out of those types of sessions and then from there i kind of just like sit back and I think about well if the song title is this or this is the main concept of the song what are the details that need to be filled in around it in order for this to to have some kind of emotional impact for myself or for the listener and then I'll write the lyrics last and um then I'll I'll do a demo of it here in my glorious basement studio and then um I'll start uh, either over, I'll start retracking final versions of those tracks, or sometimes the demo versions end up being what makes it to the final master. Um, yeah, so that's that's pretty much it. How about like the putting this? Like, I was just thinking about this the other day. How are how many like how like all these people have these incredible songs? But how do they get these amazing words that go with it? If that makes sense. Mm. Yeah, like how how is it that yeah, people can do both those two things? Yeah. Like to write the music and then also write the words to it. Yeah. Man, I asked myself that question too with some of my favorite artists. Just like, how do you just how do you get so good at what you do? Yeah, it just seems so crazy. I'm, I'm with you. I don't know the answer. I wish I did. I mean, because I always always listen to these or listening to like the words of the song and thinking to myself, how do you think of them? I mean, I have great great yeah. lyrics, but. They're not that great. I mean, I hope. <laughs> I try my best. Uh, yeah, I'm sure they're great. Yeah, I, you know, it's just like, I think that the lyricists that we love so much, they're writing lyrics probably every day for a long time, you know, just logging the hours. And I bet you 95% of the stuff they write sucks. But they write so much that the five that's good that that you know maybe a full album's worth of songs is only five percent of what they wrote that year. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I think it's just kind of like a numbers game. I I really do. I think that if you get into the flow of creating every day, that your uh, inner critic kind of can't keep up with the amount of work you make, work, uh -huh. work you do. And when that happens, good ideas come through. And uh, the critic doesn't silence good ideas before they have a chance to blossom. And I think that's how I think that's how good lyrics are written. Good writers write good lyrics. That's my that's my thought. Well, I mean, they have a lot of cool cool people behind them doing helping them out with these words. But um mm -hmm. so Absolutely, there's that too. People are co-writing with other people, and yeah, you're absolutely right for sure. There's that too. That can't be overlooked. Do you do you do you do that too? 
do you have co-writers to help to help you out with some some stuff or just do it on your own uh with this project i just do it i just do it on my own i would like to get into more collabs uh actually i have i've done a lyric song singing collab with another artist with haunted continents actually twice one band is called dumb lords and another band is uh another artist her name is river hooks and um the, it always just leads to really cool cool outcomes that you wouldn't get to normally if it's just you by yourself you know so it's um it's awesome to, to collab with people so yeah but for the most part i'm just doing it by myself i i kind of would love to do a collab with somebody i was kind of, i was going to do one with um this band called um cheer up dusty but it just never it it was just too busy yeah yeah that happens you know schedules are tight and it's, it can be tough to uh to nail nail things down you know like adults are adults are busy <laughs> i guess so <laughs> tough to get a bunch of adults in the same room at the same time even digitally yeah. you know it's tough well it's a one person just doing the uh, acoustic kind of stuff but still so mm. busy I guess but i guess it's hard doing it yep doing it virtual too so trying to get everybody schedule planned out or whatever I'm back. I don't know. Am I back? Yeah, you're back. Okay. <laughs> so, um, do you have anything um, else you want to chat about? About music? Uh, I mean, not not off the top of my head. I'm. I'm uh, I thank you for asking when the next song is coming out. I um, appreciate that. That's, you know, that's going to be mid-September. So if anybody's listening to this that uh, has heard my stuff and you like it, keep an eye out mid-September for that new song, Thaw. And uh, yeah, I plan on just about every about every month or six weeks dropping a new single and uh, just staying at it. Where can people find you at? Uh at Haunted Continents on any platform. You can do Instagram, uh, TikTok, um, Haunted Continents on Spotify, or hauntedcontinents.com. That's my website. And uh, Or Haunted Continents on YouTube. I was, just, I was lucky. I Haunted Continents is a little, little wacky for a name, so nobody had chosen it before. So I got all the properties just the haunted continents. I didn't need to do haunted continents band or haunted continents music or anything like that. So haunted continents, you'll find it. So, you look. so where, did, where did that came from? Like, did you come up? How did you come up with it? Is there a story uh, behind there? It was, it, it came from uh, the lyrics of a song that I had written. Um, kind of like a, a, a double meaning of like the space that we like a lot of the songs that I, that I write, they're very like reflective about just like, how can I be a better person? How am I fucking things up right now in my life? And how can I just be a better person and more valuable to the world in general? And those, uh, those, those shortcomings, those like things that kind of like, I, I was thinking like the shortcomings, they kind of like haunt me in a way. And I wish that I could be, uh, I could be more valuable to the world. So it, just kind of thinking of like the mental landscape of, fi of, of battling um, your inner demons, uh, like the, our mind space is kind of like the haunted continents, you know, like every one of us is dealing with our own special thing in our, in our head. And this is our world inside here. So that's that it kind of came from that idea of like haunted continents, meaning like your own battle against your, your, uh, your inner struggles. And, um, the other meaning of just like living in a world where things are, things are messed up and, uh, we, we got to fight to make them 
okay for people. A lot of people don't have what they need. And, uh, you know, we, as long as, as long as that's the case, you know, we, we live in the haunted continents, you know, it's, that's kind of where, where, kind of where it comes from. Those two, those two ideas. That's cool. Yeah. All right. Let me see. Let me think of something. Um, I don't know what I was going to think about. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's all good. No worries. But um, thank you so much for doing this with me. You got it. It was a pleasure to meet you. I, you know, I've been enjoying seeing what you post on the socials and stuff, and it's nice to kind of finally put a voice with a face and and talk to you in person. And it's also really cool, like kind of the novelty of the internet, the miracles of the internet. It doesn't wear off on me, like the fact that now we know each other, and you're in Kansas City, and I'm, you know, in the backwoods of Connecticut. It's just, I don't know, it's just interesting that it's like, oh. Now we know each other and we live on opposite sides. Well, not opposite sides, but just so far from each other. It's kind of cool. Well, I mean, if I'm always in that area, in the East Coast again, that would be amazing. Well, I mean, I have family in the East Coast, so, I mean, it's kind of nice. Um, in cool. the, Jer the Jersey area. Mm, um, okay. Yep. Yeah, Jersey a lot for shows and stuff. That's cool. If you ever back that way, shoot me an email. Maybe I'm playing a show somewhere nearby or something. That'd be sick to, to meet up. That would be awesome. If you ever come to Kansas City, I can um, try to find you a show out here. Okay, cool. That sounds great. Um, and also, if you if you know, if you you know, you got your ear to the ground with artists, definitely keep me in the loop of artists that you like that uh, are kind of in the same vein. I'm always looking to collab and meet more folks. So and I know what you do in your podcast, you know a million artists probably. So if you find any yeah. that you like, I mean, hey, you there, know this band. just let me know. There you know. is, there's, there, well, I'll say some artists that I liked, that I've been listening to is, um, her name is Mary Jennings. She's from Nashville, Tennessee. She's a good friend of mine. I, I, um, she came to Delaware um, when I was in college. And I said, you know, I haven't seen her for about four years when I was out there. So she came down and had a concert at uh, a beach. And I just drove down there with a couple of friends. And she, and it was great, you know, get to see her play. Nice. But, um, there's a couple of artists that I like. I'll send them your way. Yeah, please. All right. Cool. Well, um, thank you for um, doing this with me again. You got it, bud. No problem. Thank you for having me. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Um, I'll let you know when this is up and running later tonight. Okay. Cool. You know how to get in touch, man. I'm I'm around. Thanks for thinking of me. Appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. I like your stuff, so I mean it's really good. Cool. Thank you. Keep it up with all the stuff you do. Will do. Keep cranking. Keep grinding. You too. Keep making yeah. those cookies. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have to get started on that soon. Um, but uh Yeah. You better get cracking, <laughs> get get whipping those eggs and, and butter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, 
if you ever need want some, you can go to the website. You can, or if you want to ask me, I'll make you some. You ever make any uh, non dairy cookies? Yeah, yeah. Or is that impossible? You do? Yeah, without without eggs. Uh, eggs are okay. Oh. Well, what what do you mean by non dairy? Not like dairy without milk or butter. Oh. <laughs> Oh, peanut butter cookies. <laughs> you got peanut butter cookies. Ooh. But I think that's go. with it. Nice. But, but that's not with egg. Yeah, they, they, uh, some cookies. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. You're the cookie expert. I just okay. need <laughs> Well, well, I'll find a recipe and figure that out. There you go. Nice. All right. Well, good luck with that, and uh, keep me keep me looped about uh, any good music and stuff, and I'll I'll see you in the uh, on the old internet. All right. All right. It was good chatting with you, and um, talk to you soon. Okay. Sounds good, bud. Have a good one. You too.